and it's like, whoa, and it blows your mind. It's all the shading and stuff. It's really well shaded. Everything looks so rounded. And you're really going to think that it's a game that's a generation ahead of its time. Yeah, it's brilliant. Like, last second timing stuff in there where you have to jump real quick. Yeah. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised at the kind of uh, game that Donkey Kong Country yeah. is. Here we are today on our way to Redmond, Washington to take an exclusive insider's look at Nintendo's new revolutionary yet unreleased game, Donkey Kong Country. Where do they get a load of us? <laughs> Guys, we finally made it. Nintendo of America, the fortress. Let's find out what Donkey Kong Country is all about. Let's go inside. Let's do it. Hey, it's Ken. Ken Lobb, development manager. Hey, man, how's it going? Donkey Kong Country, how you doing? Ken, what is the deal with this here? Yeah, we get a lot of letters, and they like to put pretty pictures on the front of the envelope, so we'll, like, uh, stick it on the wall, you know? So, uh, Ken... You want, you want a banana? Uh, no thanks. Ken, I want in on this Donkey Kong Country thing. I want in. I want on the inside. Uh, I don't know. Ken, me and you, pal, we go back a long way? Come on. What do you think? Mm. Old time's sake? Okay, I'll take you to the treehouse. The treehouse? God, I hope there's no climbing involved. God, God, here it is. What's the password? Diddy. Password? Diddy? Yeah! <laughs> You know, after about a thousand ditties, we finally get into the treehouse. We're going to say hello to Tony Harmon. He is the product development manager here at Nintendo. Tony, how you doing? You're pretty good. Welcome to the treehouse. Thank you very much. And I want to know, uh, I want to know the story behind the game. Are you here to talk about the story? I'm the wrong guy. We need to get Dan here. This is Dan Oh, Dan! Hey. What's up? How are you? Pretty good. Good, Dan. I want to know something about this story. Basically, we uh, had a chance to kind of create a new story for Donkey Kong. We gave him a world to live in, some supporting characters. Um, foremost among those, Diddy Kong, the little Kong wannabe monkey guy. Little Kong wannabe? Um, he's a cool little dude who follows Kong around, tries to be just like him. The story actually picks up with Diddy uh, sitting in the jungle, guarding the banana horde. No sooner does the uh, storm start, nightfall, Kremlings come, uh, stuff Diddy Kremlings, in the barrel. Kremlings are the tribe of evil reptilian beings who inhabit the island, and they're very envious of Kong's banana stockpile. As we all are. Yes, as anyone would be. Yeah. And they stuff Diddy in the barrel, punt it in the bushes, and grab all the bananas and take, take off them, take off the loot. Donkey wakes up and... Next day, Kong wakes up, where's my bananas? Uh, he goes out to find him. Rescue his little buddy, find out where he is. But Kong's angry, he's got his little buddy back, but he needs his bananas. Needs so we get the Kremlins, we got Diddy, and we get the big fella. Tony, did you have a favorite uh, character? Are there more characters in this? Ah, there's a lot of characters. I like the whole Kong family. We got Cranky. Cranky's the star of the original uh, Donkey Kong game. Still alive, Your is he? Dad or grandfather played that game. Uh, wow. Then we also have uh, Funky Kong. Funky's kind of the California circuit kind of. Funky Kong. Kong. Yeah, he That's runs nice. uh, Funky Flights, and the Funky Flights allow you to fly around in different parts of the game. We also got Candy Kong. Candy Kong is Donkey Kong's love interest. I mean, okay, good. I was wondering. Maybe I could uh, take a look at the game? Yeah, sure. Right yeah. over here. These guys are so easy. Yeah. This is Armand, and this is Rich. Hey, these, how guys, you doing? Oh, huh? these guys test Donkey Kong Country for a living. We have hundreds of areas in Donkey Kong Country, and these guys have to play each area probably 100, 200 times each, weeding out all the bugs. This is a prototype board. There is eight chips on this, four meg each, which makes it a 32 meg game, the biggest game ever. Um, this 32 megs allows us to do a variety of action and uh, a variety of backgrounds. We have snow levels, jungle levels, the pyramid type levels, pyramid levels, the cave level, level, the forest levels, mines, the industrial level, and underground factories, all kinds of lot bizarre of places here. that you wouldn't expect to find on an island. Yeah, it does. We've got a bunch of guys that call it goodies. These guys help you out. We got. Rambi, who's a rhinoceros who bashes through some walls, helps you find some hidden areas. We got Winky the Frog. He's bad. He can jump on top of like Can't forget Espresso either. Yeah, we got Espresso. That's an ostrich, a flying ostrich with these little bitty wings and goes flopping along the top of the screen. We have a lot of other special effects we do as well. On the snow level, we have 12 different layers of snow going back and forth. We have uh, forest levels with parallax scrolls for dimension in the game. 
Well, how did this project get started? Visited my friends at Rare. Rare's been working with Nintendo for a number of years, and uh, Tim Stamper, the head creative person there, was telling me about an idea he had to make a game out of fully rendered characters. Tim! I was just curious as to how you made them look so real. Because we're based in Twycross, we have uh, a zoo about two miles away. Ah, uh, you went to the zoo. Oh, the zoo, yeah, and had a, a good look at the gorillas and the monkeys and with video cameras. It was pretty funny. Hey, big fella. Hey, there's Diddy. Diddy Donkey. Oh, get okay. the other way, Diddy. How's it feel to be a prototype, fellas? Using uh, advanced computers to uh, to produce a, a three-dimensional model that we can that we can display on a computer screen. So, uh, what do we got to eat here? Well, today we got the cream of banana soup, the banana and peanut butter sandwich. Hey, well, your name is uh, George... Uh... George Zachary from Silicon Graphics. I was wondering if you could help me out a little bit in explaining the game. Sure, it's, uh, it's, it's a really cool game. It was created on this thing called the Challenge, which is this really advanced supercomputer. Basically, picture 20 supercomputers in a box. Now, with all this technology, am I going to have to buy an adapter for my home Nintendo? Not at all. In fact, uh, when the game was created on the Challenge, it was basically specially output to the Super Nintendo game system. So it basically comes in a cartridge, you stick it in the system, and you play. How do we make the, the roundness, the 3D? Actually, it was created on the, on the Challenge, first in a wireframe. Actually, then you grow shade them or you can fong shade them, and then you actually texture map them. And you can even trilinearly bitmap interpolate. That sounds a little dangerous. Uh, and let me ask you this, I heard downstairs something about ACM yeah, technology. Yeah, that's, that's advanced right? computer modeling. Basically what you can do with it is, it lets you create fully realistic, fully rendered 3D graphics. So the person has a sense of, like, of really being there. Okay. Same computers that were used in Terminator 2, Jurassic Park, new movies like True Lies, Mask. A year and a half later, we're closing on the finish of the game. All right, here we are. We're about to talk to two guys who play this game 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And guess what, folks? Guess what? They get paid. This is Henry. Henry, say hello. Hey, what's up? Henry, uh, we wondered if maybe you could show us a couple tips and pointers. Yeah, sure. No problem. That'd be great. 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 Well, this is the first level, and this is Donkey Kong's Treehouse, and that's okay. where we got our name from. And there's a banana arrow on top of the trees when you first start. Donkey Kong can drop down there, and he can knock the keg out of the floor, and he can roll it up against the wall and bounce back and ride it. Ah. And Donkey Kong will just cruise straight through the first part of this stage, and it's a good way to get people started off. You can just bowl over some of the tougher enemies that might have gave him a problem. Right. Yeah, hey, you hungry? You want a banana? No. Well, I guess I can show you something else, too. This is a snow level later on in the game. It is snowing. Donkey Kong can now ride, you know, ride thin barrels and shoot out. And this one part here is a series of barrels, and if you can navigate it properly, almost perfect, and not miss anything, you can score a bunch of free men at the end of the level. A bunch of free men, not just one. Yeah, a bunch. A blue balloon comes up, and Donkey Kong can grab it. There oh, it is. Is very hard? It's tough. you got to get it down perfect. And wow, so you got a bunch of free men. Let's go talk to Isaac. This is Isaac. Isaac, say hello. Hello. Isaac, I was wondering maybe you could uh, show us a couple more pointers. Possible? Yeah, I can do that. No problem. These guys are great. All right. What do we got? We got okay. more snow. Yeah, we have more snow here. Okay. okay. What we're going to do is we're going to jump on this igloo and use this really slow vulture. It looks peculiar. Peculiar enough to get us into a bonus level. Bonus. And I must say, this is one of over a hundred bonus levels. A hundred bonus levels. Yeah, and in this bonus level, Not you have to... something you see in every game. <laughs> Absolutely. You have to guess which barrel that this golden medallion's gonna wind up in. Like to take a guess? Uh, yeah, the far right. Okay. Oh, you're very good. Very good. Okay, the second uh, tip I'm gonna show you, it involves our little friend Diddy. Diddy? Yeah, Diddy's the cool guy. You walk over to this little thing here, you jump on top of it, even. you're gonna grab that rope, let the rope take you over, jump right on top of that little stump in the ground, pick up the TNT, walk over to this oil can, blow it up, fall right into another bonus level. Now what you want to do in this bonus level is jump out of this canister, here, out of this little can, and grab the balloon. So we have some pointers now. Good thing you came with us, because you learned some things today that, boy, you're not gonna learn just anywhere else. You thought it was gonna be a waste of your time, didn't you? Fried green bananas, bananas al gratin. Video game music should draw you into the game. In Donkey Kong Country, we had graphics that were way beyond anything else that's ever been done. We were also hoping to get some music better than anything that's ever been done. This music, for example, is very upbeat, fits with the jungle. It's an early level. The level's not very hard. The music is kind of nice. OK, now here we have the music that goes with the water level. Now, in this level, you've just finished a really, really hard level in the game. We use this music and this fairly easy level as kind of a reward. 
because the music is so good, we're putting this music on a CD. You know, something that's big in Japan for many, many years is game music on CD. It hasn't been a big hit in America because maybe the music hasn't been quite up to what you hear on the on the radio. Is every daytime you're gonna lose it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we got massive Smurfs attacking him on yeah. the scaffold level. What are, what are they? What are the big blue blue buff? Well, the reason why I like them is because for one, they're big, they're blue, and they're buff. Well, and you, and when you hit them, you and they kind of bounce. Kind of well. The morphing, morphing guys. rocks. The morphing those guys rocks. are so yeah. cool, man. You touch these barrels, and the lights turn on and off. And uh, these rock guys are just kind of rolled up. And you hit this light, they unroll and they start walking towards you. It's so cool. It's yeah. really and you got to switch them on and off. That's so stuff. scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on guard's uh, the fisher ride, and he just kind of pokes you with the, his swordfish front. and Pokes the bad guys. Yeah. No, yeah. No, 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 no. Do you guys get to ride? Do we get to my ride minecart? Oh, yeah. The minecart was a favorite stage. It's That's a, your favorite stage? Yeah, it's a pr pretty cool stage. You're mining? <laughs> What are we well, doing? You're on the tracks, and a lot of them are broken, so you gotta avoid, you know, a lot of the broken tracks so you don't fall into the caverns. I mean, we put this out. What do you think? What do you think your friends are gonna think about this game? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think really you have to tell them all that much. Once they see the pictures, yeah, it's just gonna be like, you have to have it, you know it, get it. It's one of those games you don't get bored with. You yeah. know, I've played it probably a hundred times, over a hundred times now, and I'm still yeah. getting better. I'm still getting yeah. better in stages. There's certain really? stages I can improve on and keep getting better. Tell you what, you better reserve this game before November 21st, because that's when it comes out in the stores. I already got mine. With Super Metroid, we wanted to make sure it was the most intense Metroid battle ever. So we thought we'd see how Killer here would fare against it. Ready, boy? That's 
24 megs worth of weapons, worlds, and weirdos old killers up against Nintendo's biggest game ever. But he's a big boy. He can handle it. Well, let's see how he did. Ship it! Super Metroid, only on the Super NES. Let's see. You were doing 140 in the 35 zone. Side swiped three cars. I believe this bumper belongs to you. Destruction. Carnage. Oh, and you didn't use your turn signal, son. I'm gonna have to write you up for that last one. Stunt Race FX with the Super FX chip for multi-dimensional visual weirdnessity. Only on the Super NES. Brian, people ask, how do you cope with being a disembodied brain? Just floating in a jar with no girls, no music, no car, no parties. It's not so bad, I say. I just play with my Game Boy. <laughs> Till they all get here. Tetris 2 has given me a headache! And I don't even have a head. Hey, you wanna know what I do when I get bored waiting for my girlfriend to decide what to wear before we go out? Nah, too frumpy. Too tight. Nah, too revealing. I just slip into this little gray plastic number. Oh, how sweet. Okay, so it's not a Game Boy, but I guess her heart's in the right place. By the window, the second shelf down on the right. Got 40 pounds burning a hole in your pocket? You could either buy a Game Boy like this, or own a pair of pants like this. 